TLO, what's poppin'? What's pop? I forgot how I used to say it. Somebody said something in the comments that I should go back to how I used to say it. Now I'm doing like a little whisper thing. TLO, what's pop? I don't even remember. Um, but uh, we are on Twitch. We are live. And by the time you see this, we won't be. So just leave a like, comment, subscribe. Turn on your post notification bells. Let's continue to grow the family from Chicago to the UK. Um, don't forget, if you miss a live or you want to catch the next live, just go to twitch.com and enter. The information is right there. I'm looking at it. You know what I'm saying? Um, this is my warning, YouTube. I'll give y'all a minute to read it at the headquarters if y'all watching this video and y'all reviewing it to make sure it's uh, friendly enough for what I got going on. And this is my purpose. You know what I'm saying? I'm here. With, I'm here for a good reason. Don't forget, we do got Patreon. We post five days a week. And we post anything we post to Twitch that doesn't get to, you know what I'm saying? It goes there. Don't forget, we got merch as well, man. Salute to you if you've ever bought a shirt. That's real love, honestly. This is how London became the uh, epicenter of UK knife crime. This is Talk TV. Talk TV be having it, low key. Talk TV got a lot of stuff. They always flood the airways, man. Let's get to it. Copyright disclaimer under Section 107 of the Copyright Act 1976. Allowance is made for fair use for purposes such as criticism, comment, news reporting, teaching, scholarship, and research. Fair use is a use permitted by copyright statute that might otherwise be infringing. Nonprofit, educational, or personal use tips the balance in favor of fair use. No copyright infringement intended. All rights belong to their respective owners. See what I'm saying? Hey, listen, my new layout, shout out to Ty on cam once again. He be thinking, of, he be doing all of this stuff, man. He be putting me on. He made that view, that he made the warning screen. He made the copyright thing with the voice. It's tough. Uh, let's get into it. It, it, brings, it brings me great pleasure to, to watch people comment on stuff that they have no idea about. Sometimes I do it, but it's funnier when, when they do it. That we <laughs> right now, let's talk to uh, Transport Minister Richard Holden, who joins us now. Good morning to you, Richard. Good morning, Julia. Thank How you very much. Very well. Thank you very much indeed for joining us. Um, uh, I mean, we're going to be talking about a transport announcement you've got. Um, but, you know, this is, a, this is an event that happened, you know, just as people are getting off a, a transport, are getting off a bus in South London. Um, a representative of the government today, um, what is your reaction and what is the government going to help do to make sure that after 16... 17-year-old boy arrested after a death of school... Oh, this is that case. Okay. Teenagers have been killed on the streets of London stabbing in stabbings this year R.I.P. But this is the last one. Look, I, 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 can I just say, first of all, that you know, this is absolutely sickening crime and my heart absolutely goes out to the, the, the friends and family of this uh, young lady who's tragically been uh, murdered on her way to school in uh, London. It, it's just absolutely unbelievable that this has occurred. Uh, no, 100% RIP. Uh, civilians, people that are not involved, kids, women, old people, like, that's a... That's, that's beyond me. Anybody, honestly, to take a life is crazy, YouTube. I don't condone it. Regarding what we're trying to do uh, in this area, we've already we banned zombie knives back in 2016. We strengthened that. No, you didn't. No, you didn't. No, you didn't. No, no, that's no, Richard. You didn't ban zombie <laughs> knives. Not knives. You banned the sale online of knives, big, massive machetes on line, which, which had writing on them that you could still. Facts. Talk to what's her name, Susan buy the knives you only just done that and then and then it, I, I, that's what i was saying and in 2019 we then strengthened that legislation and we're going further again at the moment uh, in that space because it doesn't matter because you didn't ban kitchen knives and you can't ban kitchen knives it's a kitchen knife you ban knives with writing on them okay take the writing off of it the, 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 it's just dumb whatever they're trying to do anyway continue we, and, and particularly to stop the illegal importation of these knives as well with tough yeah, sentences. Get them that's there. What Prime Minister, I think that's what you're referring to with the Prime Minister's most recent announcement in that space. The thing is, we've also had lots of announcements right, about is... stop and search. We've had lots of announcements about how if you're caught carrying a knife, you'll go to jail, you know, automatic penalty to the second time. The reality is most people 
caught, fat, caught with a knife, um, even on a second occasion, don't go behind bars. So, you know, how are we going to tackle this issue if these youngsters are more afraid of someone else with a knife than they are of the authorities? Talk to them. Uh, this, I think this has to be two things. Uh, one, as um, Paul was saying just before, you know, this is about, obviously about sentencing, but on the other side, it's also about every... Oh, this, her name is Julia Hartley Brewer? Okay. ...body in our communities. Uh, if they know people are carrying weapons, getting in touch with authorities and getting these knives taken off the street and getting these individuals prosecuted. I think there's, it, that, that's what we absolutely have to do. Um, we cannot see more young people uh, needlessly losing their lives lives on the streets of our capital city. Uh, uh, what I would say is that the police are there to prosecute people and to deal with the situation. <laughs> they don't uh, even turn up to a shoplifting, really, for God's sake. And I really, and I, what, I, what, I, what I would say is She's not talk down the what police, bad. not say there's nothing that can be done, because actually people are being prosecuted, they can be put in prison, uh, and that's what but should happen. Okay, people but they're not. Are we going to go around in circles? There isn't, there, but they're, they're, they're not being. Julia, they're not Julia, being, no, Richard. No, no, you no, can no, keep be, saying to, it, but this doesn't ever happen. To be very... To be very serious, Julia, you, if, you're, if you're going around you saying think I'm nothing not can serious? be done, that's just not true. Do you think I'm not serious? That's, that's, Do you know how many that's, times I've had that's, to that's talk just... about children being killed on the streets of this city? Do you know I mean? I mean? Do you think I'm not serious well, about we... this? Do you think I wasn't serious when I texted well, we... my daughter last night to check that she was safe because she was late home? Do you think every parent in this city, every parent in this a city and a town in this country wasn't terrified out of their bloody wits yesterday? Talk that, talk that, Julia. That their child wouldn't come home. Everyone's serious about this, apart from the government, apart from the mayor, apart from the police. That's total nonsense, Julia. Really? Uh, as you well, when are you going to do the something? The, 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 okay, how the, many teenagers? 16 this year alone what, what, in one city. What needs to happen? How Julia, many Julia, before Julia, you Julia, get Julia. serious? Here we are again, talking about knife crime. You and I talk about knife crime all the time. Hey, I like Julia. This young girl was just 15 years old. She had an argument. Well, she, she turned down the flowers from a, a young man, a child. Uh, this spiralled out of control on the bus. Then there was this huge incident. She's dead. This knife crime is uh, out of control. I don't know the whole story about it. Tragically, yes it is. And something quite dramatic needs to be done. But if we look at police leadership, for the last 20 years or so. They have been completely deluded in their fluffy, liberal, woke, university-educated minds into thinking that the police need to be popular. So they trail lines like community engagement repeatedly, and they endeavor to reach out to uncle every Tom Cobley and all in an effort to be popular. The harsh fact of the matter is the streets, the country, needs to be a hostile environment for criminals. And the police need to be unpopular with criminals. The more unpopular the police are with criminals, the more popular they will become with the law-abiding public. Children, not lying. Children, children, school children, who see police officers taking knives off of other school children and arresting them will be very popular with teachers, parents, and law-abiding kids. She's not lying at all. I couldn't agree more. She is the 16th teenager to be murdered in London this year. Also, we saw in Bradford, this um, armed police swarming Bradford city centre. There was a mass brawl. All of these young people getting together, hurling stuff at police cars, causing utter mayhem. We saw police, uh, police, uh, armed police actually running away from the situation as it turned out of control. We saw them chasing uh, one of the big BMW X5s as well. These are young people wearing hoodies and masks. They believe that they're anonymous and they believe they can get away with it. And the reason they think that is because they can. And the law-abiding people of Bradford close their doors, shut their windows, and live in fear. When they see the police with shields, batons, full public order gear, put down that kind of disorder in a proportionate but firm way, then lo and behold, the police will become popular with those who abide by the laws of the land. I don't know how many times we have to be back. Ooh, this is like a little... Okay. 
Talk to in me. this story. Uh, there are many stories, of course, just by definition of the world we live in, uh, that come around quite regularly. But I would say that of knife crime um, is up there, of stories that we revisit time and time again. And if you were designing this world from scratch, you might think that each time we talked about it, there'd be some progress. I'd be able to bring some, some new news to the table, a new initiative or something that was happening that had changed the, uh, the, 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 the terms of engagement that had altered our response to it the response of the criminal justice system, the response of our political masters, the police, etc. You might think by now, and I've been talking about it for 20 years, for goodness sake, that I would be able to initiate this debate and say, well, do you know what? Back in the day, it used to be like this. Kids walked around, they didn't really care. They got caught and that was it. And nobody wanted to do it anymore. That's never happened. It doesn't matter how many times we talk about this. It doesn't matter how grotesque and disturbing the story is. Every death in whatever manner is tragic. Every death of a, a child, essentially, a 14-year-old girl, is tragic. And when a 15-year-old girl, I beg your pardon, uh, is, is tragic, um, when you see a story like this... So what's the story behind this? So I, I don't, I never really got the full story. I've seen it on like social media as a girl got, you know what I'm saying, a, a, a young lady fell victim to knife crime on a bus by another student. Is that what it is? That was like on some like, do you want to date me type stuff? So, and this is the problem, man. When there's no father in the home, like I'm, 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 I, like emotional strength is not like taught. Like kids are coming up like they're very emotionally unstable. And I'm not gonna. I was, I was an emotionally unstable kid too. That's why I got in so much trouble. You know what I'm saying? You can't control your emotions as a man. And you take that, and low-key as a child, you take that into manhood, and it gets worse. Um, it gets worse before it gets better. So it's like, man, if you've never seen a man, and in, in, in a real man, like, it's, it's tough to become a real man. You know what I'm saying? It's tough to emulate something you've never seen. You know what I'm saying? As a man, you cannot let your emotions run you. If a man, if another man or something like some so minuscule can take you off your balance as a man, then you can't really be calling yourself a man. You, you, you got to know what battles to pick. What <laughs> When to walk away, when to turn the other cheek. Sometimes as a man, you just got to take that L, man. And, and as a man, you're going to take a lot of ills and you're going to have to stay quiet about them a lot of the time. It's tough, but it's, that's just the way it is. You don't want and especially with the opposite sex. Like, you got to, like, if you your girl arguing with you all day, like, you just, just give her the win. She could be dead wrong. If you just be like, all right, babe, my bad, I'm sorry. Just, just That should end it right there. <laughs> and you go away and you go have your beer and she's she feels victorious. She calls her friends up like, yeah, girl, I told him. Yeah, he said, sorry, we good now. The whole point is y'all good now. Simple as that. Some battles is not worth the fight. Some battles are not worth a war. W the lit one. I'm telling y'all, listen. Come to me for manly advice. <laughs> want to be desensitized in any kind of way. You don't want to get to that point where you go, do you know what? I, we see this so often. I never do. I, I never think, oh, here's another story. I am fully aware, and I think most people, particularly if you're a parent, will be ingesting the, the horror and the trauma that everybody around this young girl will be going through and will never get over. The one, the, the only thing you can hope from any story such as mm -hmm. this is resolution and i don't just mean that the perpetrator is caught we know that the police have been given an extra 24 hours to question a 17 year old boy arrested over this fatal stabbing uh, we are yet to know fully maybe within the next day we will the identity of the young girl or anything more about the boy being questioned so but it's not just that that in itself doesn't solve the issue and that's another thing man like if, if you if you're a teacher I'm going to get on these teachers, too. If you're a teacher in school, if you're a coach, you, you got to understand that all kids, you have to come in there with an understanding that some kids do not have a father figure 
And you might have to be that in some child's life. And if teachers and stuff is giving up on kids and just sending them to the to the detention office, I know like you you receiving a check. I know that this is, this might be out of your job title, but it's really not. You're here to mold kids. <laughs> Get here to mold kids into the appropriate adults and teach them the right things. And I feel like it falls in their responsibility. So as a teacher, if you're a teacher watching this or you're a coach or any of that certain things, like be, be that and more. You know what I'm saying? So if you're getting mad at kids in your classroom and kicking them out and telling them they ain't worth nothing, you think that you think that the 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 the, the 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 uh, the behavior they're exhibiting at school isn't like a call for help because they ain't got nothing going on at home or something because they missing something at home. Why don't you be that for a second? Calm down and try to understand instead of just just man. I don't get paid enough for this. I'm feeling like shut up. <laughs> Do work. Work harder. You chose the job as a teacher or coach. That's what comes with it sometimes. That I'm to, I want to live in a world where we don't have the problem to begin with, where we don't have kids who are so cavalier, they are happy to walk down the streets. And this is the interesting bit. We see kids clad in balaclavas under the light of a silvery moon, walking around, concocting and cooking up plans to do bad things to people. We're aware of that. But more and more, some of these kids aren't even wearing balaclavas. And this isn't happening under the light of a silvery moon. This is happening in broad daylight. This young girl lost her life at half past eight in the morning while going to school. That's how brazen this story is. That's how cavalier perpetrators can be. So what is behind this? What is the root cause of knife crime? Now, there's some group think going on here. One group of kids encourages another group of kids. There's some status in carrying a big blade. My blade's bigger than your blade. Oh, you call that a... No, this is a knife. It's that... There's some of that going on. The kind of gang mentality is they think they're the Sopranos, and they're not. There's a bit of that, but bearing in mind, every time we see one of these stories of a young kid getting stabbed to death, and many more, of course, getting injured in knife-related crime, the perpetrator is almost always caught within about two days maximum. And that's because they carried it out in front of people. Folk know who they are. They weren't really hiding their identity. Morning. They were happy to be seen and known as the kid with the machete. Machete. Yeah. For he was, he's, he's, he's. Goodness. I don't like some of his wording on some of the stuff he's saying, but he's still making valid points. The chosen weapon of choice for the Rwandan genocide is what people and young kids are walking the streets with in this country. And doing so. He's still valid. And not bothered that everybody can see it or knows about it. That, in fact, adds to it. A 15-year-old girl in a school uniform stabbed to death, uh, allegedly by a 17-year-old boy with a machete on her way to school, 8.30 in the morning. Uh, this has, of course, inspired a lot of calls uh, for something to be done about this knife epidemic. Uh, and that falls upon the mayor, the London mayor, because he is the commissioner of police and crime. This is his job. Uh, have a listen to and a look uh, at what he had to say to another channel in an interview that I find breathtaking. Breathtaking. It is so banal and wrong oh, yeah, and let ridiculous. Hear it, yes. uh, let's have a listen. If the Conservatives want to use the murder of a 15-year-old girl as a political football, that's up to them. I I'm not willing to play ball. I'm quite well, clear. Well, you, you yourself did blame the government cuts for an increase this. in knife crime in London in your first answer. I'm quite clear uh, about the consequences of austerity. I've been campaigning since 2016 to end austerity, to invest in not just the police and the criminal justice system, but to invest in young people, in youth workers, in teachers, in schools, in mentors. Unbelievable. Unbelievable, Re Rebecca. I in what way have the Conservatives been using this appalling tragedy as a political football? In what way? I, I feel like that statement alone, like that statement alone, the Conservatives are using this as a political football. Like you don't even got to know nothing about politicians. That's just a, that's, that's him using it as a political football, literally.
Why is he? Why is he talking about the Tories and austerity? A child mm. has died on the streets of his city, That's crazy. and he's playing politics with it. He's the one who's playing politics. Yeah, exactly, he the is. Conservatives. <laughs> Like he, I don't know nothing about whatever he talking conservative this, conservative that, but he just literally made it a whole politic thing when he just said that. Absolutely extraordinary, don't you think? Absolutely. I mean, this is a guy that is absolutely shameless when it comes to Talk these kind it. of PR techniques of just sort of, you know, presenting something as a fact which has which hasn't even happened. His priority from day one has never been. To do Use that as a perfect moment to throw something about the, the knife crime epidemic in London, and as you say, this is an absolute tragedy. This is taking it to new. It's better if you just come on here and be like, "Man, it's a lot going on in the streets. I see it. We trying, but you know it can't happen overnight. <laughs> it's hard. Debts, isn't it? When you see a, a fifteen-year-old schoolgirl in on her way to school. Um, cut down in the prime of her life because a right. friend rejected the roses from some boy or something, you know, some yeah. ridiculous, you know, excuse for what, why her life has been cut short. And for Sadiq Khan to um, try and turn this into something about, oh, well, the Tories. I mean, it's as bad as Nicola Sturgeon, isn't it? It's those are horrible Tories. It's yeah. their fault. No, you take some ownership and present what your plans are, Mr. Khan, as to what you're going to do to deal with he ain't got no plans. this problem yeah, because yeah. it's a very real problem and you know you've got a very upset family that there was a problem before him and there's going to be a problem after his time and concerned families across london that this is not being dealt with yeah, 16 kids have uh, been stabbed to death uh, since January this year. Uh, this is a big problem and all he drones on about is clean air. As I said in my opening monologue, uh, that poor girl... To my clean air. Get an air purifier. ...who's been named today, uh, she will never get to breathe the clean air uh, that he uh, never stops talking about. Uh, he needs to seriously, very quickly, recalibrate his priorities, does he not? Talk about it. Shout out to what's her name though. What's her name? Julia. She really put bro in his place. They ain't even give him a moment. He couldn't even gather himself. R.I.P. to that girl, man. And and everybody else who's lost their life to knife crime. I'm gone.